ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم اما بعد Indeed, all praises for Allah. We praise Him, we seek His help, and we seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whomsoever Allah misguides, then none can guide. I bear witness and I testify that nothing has the right to be worshipped except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is alone and He has no partners. And I bear witness and I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger. As for that which follows, فَإِنَّ أَصْدَقَ الْحَدِيثِ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ Indeed, the most truthful speech is the speech of Allah. وَخَيْرَ الْهُدَى هُدَى مُحَمَّدٍ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَشَرَّ الْأُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا the worst of affairs are the newly invented matters. Every newly invented matter is an innovation. Every innovation is misguidance. And every misguidance is in the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said in His noble book, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَعِبٌ وَلَهُ And the life of this world is nothing more than play and amusement. وَلَدَّاهُ الْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ And the abode of the hereafter is better for those who have taqwa. أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Will you then not understand? In this noble verse, Allah Jalla wa'ala, He clarifies to us the reality of this worldly life. And He clarifies to us the reality of the hereafter. And that the life of this world, it has no value. It's nothing more than vain amusement and deception. But the life of the hereafter, it is greater. Because it is everlasting. And in it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for those who believe. And those who fear. That which no eye has ever seen. And no ear has heard. And no human heart has ever even perceived. And this is why we find that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who was the best individual to walk the face of this earth. He used to live a very simple life. Alayhi salatu was salam because he knew the reality of this dunya. It was narrated, narrated by Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. He said, Nama Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala hasir. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam slept upon a mat. Taqama wa qad athara fi jandil. And he got up from sleep and he had marks on his side as a result of sleeping on this mat. فَقُلْنَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ لَوِتَّخَذْنَا لَكَ وِضَاءً So the companion said, O Messenger of Allah, we could get you a bed. Meaning we could get you a bed that is more suitable and softer than this. فَقَالْ مَا لِي وَمَا لِلدُّنْيَا He said, what do I have to do with this, this world? What do I have to do with this worldly life? ما أنا في الدنيا إلا كراكب استضل تحت شجرة. He said, in this world, I am like a rider who gets some shade underneath a tree. ثم راح وتركها. And then he goes and he leaves it. So we see here in this hadith, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to abstain from many materialistic things, even though he had the ability to enjoy them. And this is due to the fact that the Prophet ﷺ knew the reality of this world. 
and that this light is temporary. It's not going to last forever. And therefore he will leave off these things and he will abstain from them. And he will give precedence to the life of the hereafter. And it should not be understood from this that a person cannot have nice things. That a person cannot wear nice clothes. Or that he cannot drive a nice car. Or that a person should not have any concern as it relates to his worthy life. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تَنْسَنَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا do not forget your portion of this worldly life. However, it's incumbent and it's a must that we have moderation and that we do not go overboard and give precedence to the life of this world over the hereafter. It was narrated by Abu Huraira, رضي الله عنه. He said, سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَقُولُ أَلَا إِنَّ الدُّنْيَا مَلْعُونَ مَلْعُونٌ مَا فِيهَا he said, I heard the Prophet ﷺ saying, Indeed, this life and that which it contains is cursed. Meaning, this world and that which it contains is blameworthy. And this is because this life, it distracts a person. And it busies a person from the worship and the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is the main purpose why He was created in this world. He said, إِلَّا ذِكْرَ Allah," Except for the remembrance of Allah. And this refers to the recitation of the Qur'an. And likewise those words of remembrance that have been reported from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, وَمَا وَالَى And that which is conducive to this. Meaning those matters and those affairs that get a person closer to his Lord. Such as the worship and the obedience of Allah Jalla wa Ala. He said, وَعَالِمًا أَوْ مُتَعَلِّبًا Or the one who has knowledge, or the one who acquires knowledge. And what's intended here are the scholars and those who seek knowledge of the religion. And they act in accordance to that knowledge and they call the people to it. Likewise, it was narrated by Sahih ibn Sa'id. رضي الله عنه, he said, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لو كانت الدنيا تعدل عند الله جناح بعوضة ما سقى كافرا منها شربة ماء. He said if this worldly life was equal to the wing of a mosquito with Allah. Now I want everyone here to really ponder upon this. Everyone knows how insignificant a, mos a mosquito is, let alone its wing. He said if this worldly life was equal to the wing of a mosquito with Allah Jalla wa ala, then Allah will not give the disbeliever a sip of water from it. And this hadith is a clear proof and evidence that shows us that this worldly life and everything that it contains has no value whatsoever with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why we should not be deceived and we should not be deluded and impressed when we see people possessing or having many materialistic things. Because this is not a sign that Allah loves a person or that Allah wants good for an individual. The Prophet wasallam said, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ يُعْطِي الدُّنْيَا لِمَنْ يُحِبْ وَمَنْ لَا يُحِبْ Indeed, Allah Azza wa Jal, He gives this life or He gives this dunya to the one whom He loves and the one that He does not love. So when you see a person having many materialistic things and having many favors and bounties from his Lord. And despite this, he's disobedient and he's sinful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he turns away from guidance. Then this is a sign that Allah jalla wa ala does not want good for this individual and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is setting him up for failure and destruction. Qala Allah azza wa jalla the meaning of which, and we will gradually punish them from where they cannot proceed. والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له 
وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم أما بعد It was authentically reported that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said الدنيا السجن المؤمن وجنة الكافر That this worldly life is a prison for the believer and it's a paradise for the disbeliever. And the scholars have mentioned that what's intended by this hadith or the meaning of this hadith is that this worldly life for the believer is like a prison in comparison to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for him in the after of reward and pleasure. And that this life for the disbeliever is like a paradise in comparison to what Allah Jalla wa ala has prepared for him in the after of pain and torment. It was narrated that al of Ibn, Ibn Hajar rahimahullah ta'ala and this is when he was the top judge in Egypt that one day he passed by a marketplace and he was in a large caravan and it, yani, the appearance of it was very nice. So a Jewish man, he came to him, he rushed up to him. And this individual used to sell flaxseed oil. And his clothes were covered in oil. His clothes were drenched in oil. And this individual was extremely poor and he was unsightly. He did not have a good appearance. So he grabbed the harness of the riding beast of Ibn Hajar rahmatullahi alayhi. He said, Ya Shaykh al-Islam He said, O oh, Shaykh of Islam Taz'umu anna nabiyakum qal Al-dunya sijnu al-mu'min wa jannatu al-kafir He said, you claim that your Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this life is a prison for the believer and it's a paradise for the disbeliever He said, fa'ayyu sijnin anta feeh wa'ayyu jannatin he said, what type of paradise are you in? Or what type of prison are you in? And what type of paradise am I in? And he's referring to the fact that Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, he had a nice caravan. And he had, he had nice things. And this individual was poor and he was destitute. He said, what type of prison are you in? And what type of paradise am I? He said, He said, as for me, in comparison to what Allah has prepared for me in the hereafter of pleasure and joy, it is as though I'm in prison right now. He said, as for you, as for you, in comparison to what Allah has prepared for you in the hereafter of a painful torment, then it's like you're in paradise right now. So this Jewish man, he was astonished. He was impressed by this response and he embraced Islam. The point that we're making here is that we should not be deceived and we should not be deluded by the life of this world. And we should not be chasing after materialistic things. We should not be chasing after money. Because everything in this dunya is temporary. It's not going to last forever. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned that the lifespan for this ummah is between 60 and 70 years old. And very few people go over it. We're not going to live forever in this dunya. And it's a must that we all know and realize that everything that we possess in this world, whether it be our family, or our wealth, or our livelihood, this is only to aid and assist us in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when a person finds that his family, or that his wealth, is deterring him or turning him away from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or, he's going to, or he gives precedence to this over the remembrance of Allah, then this individual will be a loser and they have to. Why are you that? Allah Jalla wa Ala said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la tulhikum amwalukum wa la awladukum an dhikrillah. Oh, you who believe, do not let your wealth and your children 
divert you from the remembrance of Allah. وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَٰلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ And whoever does that, then indeed they are the, the losers. Meaning that they're going to lose themselves and their families on the Day of Judgment. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in another verse, قُلْ إِنَّ الْخَاسِرِينَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَهْلِيهِمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Indeed the losers are those who lose themselves and their families on the Day of Judgment. أَلَا ذَٰلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ Indeed that is a clear loss. نَسَلَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ أَنْ يُوَفِّقَنَا وَإِيَّاكُمْ لِكُلِّ مَا يُحِبُّ وَيَرْضَاهُ We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us success in that which He loves and He's pleased with. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا وَقِنَا عَذَابِ النَّارِ And we ask our Lord for the good of this life and the good of the hereafter and to save us from the punishment of the hellfire. اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين والحمد لله رب العالمين